the Graham Center is doing a number of things. Uh, the, the part to, to help change the state of civics uh, in Florida, uh, in, in part, just lending Senator Graham's name to the cause is a, is a, uh, a vehicle for change in the state. But more concretely, uh, the Graham Center has uh, launched a partnership with the Lou Fry Institute at the University of Central Florida, which I direct. That partnership is called the Florida Joint Center for Citizenship. Uh, the Joint Center uh, has uh, made a commitment to teacher training uh, and finding the resources to make that happen. It's also made a commitment to trying to measure where the state is going in civics. So we've been producing something called the Florida Civic Health Index uh, for the past couple of years and plan to keep doing that. So we're measuring, we're working directly with teachers, and we hope very soon to be working directly with students in helping them to develop the competencies that they need to be effective citizens in their communities here in Florida. Uh, Florida Civic Health uh, is um, among the worst in the nation. Uh, there, there, there's no other way to say it. Uh, we, we've worked uh, with the uh, National Conference on Citizenship uh, to develop a uh, civic health index for the state. Uh, it measures uh, the extent to which people volunteer. Uh, what we find is that f compared to all the other states in the nation, Florida ranks 49th in the rate of people just volunteering their time in their communities. We looked at voting. Florida ranks 32nd in voting. We looked at uh, uh, the extent to which people have worked with others in their communities to help solve community problems. People in Florida have generally not been engaged in their communities. We looked at the extent to which people uh, attend public meetings in their communities. And we find that Florida ranks 47th or 48th among the states in uh, the extent to which they, they're, they're engaged in, in public issues in, in their communities. Um, when we aggregate all that, add it all up, and compare a, a consistent index across the states, we find that Florida sits about 46th. Uh, what you need to understand about that is that, that what that really says is that Florida's communities, people are not very engaged in their communities. And uh, I think the solutions are going to have to be found in the state kind of community by community, finding ways to engage citizens in, with their neighbors to help improve the quality of life in, the, in their community. A number of people have argued that uh, the extent to which we have a transient population in Florida, rapid population growth, so people are coming from a variety of other regions, uh, is responsible for the weakness of our civic health. And certainly, I think those are contributing factors. But at its core, I, I fear that the, the condition of our civic health is a function of our historic underinvestment in education in Florida. Uh, if we compare ourselves to a state that ranks at the top, for example, Minnesota, one of the big differences we see is that there's been enormous investment in ensuring that we have an educated population in the state. Much larger investment per pupil uh, in uh, 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 education, uh, a larger investment in, in higher education. And I think ultimately what, one of the things we know from all of the studies that have been done for the last 30 or 40 years about political participation is that the more educated people are, the more engaged they are. Civics is about the
competencies that are required to be able to affect what government does, not just understanding how a bill becomes a law or what the president's job is. The state of civics education in Florida is uh, really pretty poor. Uh, civics has been edged out of the curriculum. Uh, in large part, that's a function of uh, testing programs that have excluded civics. The No Child Left Behind law, for example, requires that students be tested uh, every year in uh, math and science and reading, but civics is uh, not tested. So as a result, uh, it tends not to be taught. Uh, in fact, we did a, a survey not long ago and found that uh, on the average across the state, elementary teachers spend about uh, 10 minutes a day on civics. And what that really means is that in some schools, it doesn't get taught at all, or certainly doesn't get taught until after FCAT, which is Florida's assessment uh, tool, which also doesn't test civics, by the way. In 2006, the state uh, legislature passed a requirement that uh, uh, civics be taught for at least a semester in, uh, in middle school. That's really been a great step forward uh, for civics education in the state. Uh, the difficulty is that uh, it's one of those unf unfunded mandates we hear a lot about. Uh, while the legislature required districts to teach the course, they didn't provide the resources to either train teachers or for instructional materials that are required to teach it. Um, in addition to the, uh, the legislation, in December 2008, uh, Florida Sunshine State standards in civics were rewritten and a new set of standards were adopted. Uh, again, an improvement for the state of civic education in that the new standards will almost certainly require a year of civics in the seventh grade. Uh, but once again, it's, uh, it's an unfunded mandate in many respects because the, uh, th there really are no civics teachers in the state except in a few places like Dade County where they've been teaching civics for a long, long time. Uh, so teachers need training uh, to be able to, uh, to teach civics in the seventh grade. The resources simply haven't been there to make that happen. To be able to teach civics, uh, m most teachers need, uh, need co what, what's called content. That is, they need to know the nuts and bolts of government. Uh, it, it's possible to get through colleges of education and, and get a degree in education without ever having taken uh, a course in political science and certainly never a course in Florida uh, state or local government. So teachers, there's no reason to expect teachers to know very much about, uh, about government, and many of them don't. Uh, so the first thing they need is to master the subject, uh, the content of the subject. Uh, we're, we're spending uh, two to three intensive weeks in the summer and follow-ups throughout the entire uh, school year with uh, teachers that are in the current program and in fact bringing them back for a, a second year. So it's a pretty big investment uh, to retrain teachers to be effective civics teachers.